I'm Isaac. Uh, we are currently on tour with Louis Tomlinson. We are indeed. I think for me, my dad uh, is a musician and he sort of encouraged me from a young age. Um, I had a, had a guitar in the house when I was little. Um, when I was about eight, I started doing lessons, watched the film School of Rock. That sort of kicked things into motion a little bit. Um, yeah, just haven't really put it down since, to be honest. How about you, mate? Thanks for asking, Isaac. That's all right. Um, yeah, my dad is a big, big music fan and, and uh, uh, always had a big record collection, like when I was growing up, of all sorts of different stuff. Uh, started playing the guitar when I was 10, played in loads of bands. And here I am. My first kind of influences were Jimmy Page, uh, Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, all those kind of like 60s guitar players and then I got into uh, Radiohead, Jeff Buckley, all that kind of 90s uh, grunge and alternative kind of stuff and then it's just kind of evolved I guess through over time loads of go through different stages I guess got into, got into the shredders for a while when I was a, when I was a teenager and then yeah I just like all different kinds of music so uh, yeah, but I guess Jimmy Page was the first guy who I just wanted to emulate, I mm. guess, when I first started. Yeah. What about you, Isaac? I think, uh, thanks for asking, Michael, yeah, appreciate it. Awesome. Uh, I think for me, I grew up listening to Green Day. Um, I've always been more of a rhythm player, really. That's kind of what I've gravitated towards. And I always loved Billy Joe's ability to sort of really lock in with the sort of bass and drums. And as a three piece, they were able to make such a big sound. And uh, sort of similar with Nirvana as well. Like when I was growing up, those two bands, I sort of rinsed a lot when I was a, when I was a little kid and then yeah like Michael said I, I kind of moved through a lot of different sort of stages like there was a while where I just wanted to be in you know, Iron Maiden and, and just play loads of riffs and stuff and then realized I wasn't good enough so I kind of went back to playing rhythm again um, and now I'm here and it's all good you know I like holding it down it's fun <laughs> Friends of mine uh, introduced me to to Victory. Uh, a few guys who I know from the Northeast were playing Victory amps, and um, yeah, they sounded great. So one day I went down to the showroom and tried out a V40 Deluxe, I believe, was the first one I tried. And it sounded great, and then um, yeah, we started working together and. Now I'm using them all the time. Yeah, they kind of wrote me in um, after Michael. I sort of turned up to rehearsal one day. I was using other amps before and um, Michael sounded great and then he kind of introduced me to the guys at Victory, got chatting. They very kindly sent me a, uh, a copper deluxe to try out for one of the shows that we had last year. Absolutely loved it. So obviously we kind of built our rigs for the tour uh, with that in mind and it's uh, I think it's really great it sounds awesome so I used two V40 combos in stereo um, and then we've got a couple of cabs underneath them there and then I'm just running them into a pretty simple pedal board um, some delays and drives and then a load of different guitars um, I guess we decided to go with you use the copper yeah and I used the uh, V40, just so it's like two different flavours yeah. on, on stage, um, I guess um, I'm kind of using mine as like a pedal platform, um, similar for you yeah, but it's different kind of voice. Me, yeah, um, um, yeah it's, it's kind of basically sort of two sides of the same coin I think with our rigs, it's um, very similar for me, I've got two coppers, um, two cabs running in stereo, 
Um, yeah, very, I wouldn't want to say basic pedal board, but like, you know, it's, it's not overly complicated. It's a couple of drives, a couple of delays and reverbs. Um, I play a couple of the Eastman semi-acoustics, um, sort of doing the rhythm stuff. It sounds pretty big. Um, and I, I think the two setups work really nicely together. When we were putting the show together, listening to the live mix, us both being on uh, too similar of a setup was just was just clashing a bit. So it's nice that we're both on the different amps. There's a lot of kind of driven tones where we're both playing together. Yeah. Um, so just to give a bit of separation. Yeah, for sure, for sure. We didn't want the arrangements to ever sound kind of too busy or too clouded, you know, and I think that could have happened. Yeah. Had we have used all the same amps or same pedals or whatever, but I think I think it works quite nicely, you know. Yeah, and we've both got quite distinct voices, I think, in the yeah. in the set. I think we're quite fortunate that Victory afforded us a bit of um, experimentation as well. Like they gave us a couple of different options to the trial so that yeah. was cool I think on this gig we're kind of going for quite a classic uh, organic organic sounds feel. yeah so having some we, we run our arms pretty loud for 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 um, for a show these days I think yeah. Um, so yeah we're going for a lot of my arms are set to like a breakup sound mm -hmm. um, and you don't really get that from a solid state amp or we do run or we have run some modelers um, in the past when we've been doing silent stage things but yeah it's nice to have that kind of big tube amp. It's just not quite the same with the with the with the modelers um, and the amp sims and stuff and I think as well like stylistically Louis really into sort of indie rock kind of stuff like he's, he's a big fan of Oasis and sort of stuff like that and I think we were trying to make yeah, make yeah. the show um, you know as, as as close to that kind of style of aesthetically yeah sort of yeah sort sonically of and aesthetically yeah big wall of amps on stage sounds cool yeah. looks cool yeah I guess on a session gig like this we have to both be chameleons depending on what the song dictates mm. that we need to do but we're also very lucky to be afforded the opportunity to kind of add our own flavor yeah on sure. this our own stamp mm. um i come from playing lots of like classic rock uh stuff um and i guess that kind of finds its way into into what we do through the solos <laughs> We've done quite a lot of varied sizes of venues so far on this tour, I'd say. Like, we went from playing sort of maybe 2,000 cat rooms in America, and we've done like a 17,000 in, in Germany somewhere. Yeah. And it's been the same amps the whole time. And yeah. they've, they've, they've made each show work, you know? And I mean, outside of doing this gig, we've both used our respective amps for like yeah. bar gigs and kind of smaller stuff as well. Yeah, smaller size shows or in the studio mm. or yeah on on different size well, i guess because you can switch the amps down to half power as well you mm. can kind of not blow people's heads off or kill birds yeah. um, <laughs> and yeah i mean usually front of house is telling us to turn down most gigs but we ignore him yeah obviously <laughs>